In this episode, we're going to be taking a look at and doing a tasting review of Lobos 1707 Tequila, right here on the Tequila Hombre, coming up next. Welcome to this episode of the Tequila Armory, where today we're going to be taking a look at doing a tasting review of Tequila Lobos 1707. A lot of people know it because it is uh, has an investor named LeBron James uh, that is involved in the brand. We're going to be doing um, a tasting and review of the Hoven, the Reposado, and the extra añejo. So I'll tell you about guys about all those as we taste through them. Wanted to go over some quick announcements though. Um, if you didn't notice and weren't watching today, we did launch our membership program today. And for those of you on a PC or uh, Android, just look for the join button right below where the subscribe button is. Uh, to join and become part of our membership where there's different perks for you. Those of you on the iOS, there's some issues with the join button in the app. So um, I guess I was just doing some research because some people had some issues with it. And uh, the, I guess the Apple had taken it out of, off, out of their app because they want to collect their percentage from um, people joining as well and haven't striked an agreement with Google on it. So if you want to join and you're on the Apple, uh, uh, any of the Apple apps or on an Apple thing, use a browser, okay? You can um, download Google Chrome for iOS and then just go to YouTube and go to the channel there and the join button should show up. And if not, uh, there's a couple videos there that show you how to get it to show up. You basically have to go down and, and click uh, to have it set the desktop version on your phone or your iPad and it'll show up. Uh, or you can use the link in the description below. Just click on the link and it'll give you the option to sign up uh, so you can take uh, participate in the membership program and, and get some of the perks that are offered at the different levels. All right, so that's the membership issue taken out. Let's not waste any more time. Let's talk about the, the story behind the brand Lobos 1707. All right, so the name, Lobos 1707, where'd that come from? Well, the gentleman that um, founded this tequila, his name is Diego Osorio, okay? And the story goes that his great, great, great grandfather um, used to go to, to Mexico and experience tequila there and was really impressed with it. And so he wanted to bring some back to Spain so what he used to do is just bring sherry, sherry barrels with him and just have the tequila makers fill them up with tequila for him. And then he'd bring them back to Spain inside the sherry barrels. <clears throat> and this is all happening back like in 1707. That's why it's Lobo 1707. That's where the 1707 comes from. It was way back in 1707 when his great, 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 great grandfather was doing this. And people in the village uh, where he lived uh, really enjoyed the tequila coming out of the sherry bottles with the flavors and stuff from sherry. And so um, Diego wanted to create this brand uh, and try to duplicate the type of tequila that his great, great, great grandfather was bringing back um, from Mexico on his trips back in the 1700s. So that's the story on you know the name and and what the brand is all about. Now, um, uh, what else was I going to say? Uh, so that's how they got the name. The, the, the Lobos name is because their family crest, the Osorio family crest, has wolves on it. And so that's where they picked the Lobos from. So, um, so LeBron James is an investor in it. He does not own the brand. He's just an investor, uh, but he um, is helping with them. And he's joined with them more for the philanthropic things that they do. Um, they're really involved in getting uh, people of color uh, and stuff like that involved in business. And they have some philanthropic things that they do as well. So they have a lot of good causes. And he wanted to get involved with them because of some of the philanthropic things that they do as well. 
All right, so that's kind of the story on the brand. Let's get into how this tequila is made. All right, so it is made out of NOM 1460, which is uh, Campania Tequilero de Arandas. They, uh, it is in the highlands of Alisco out of Arandas. I don't know who the master distiller is. I wasn't able to find out who the master distiller was, uh, but they use Weber Blue Agave from the highlands for this. Um, it is uh, cooked in an autoclave under high pressure. They use a roller mill to extract the sugars. And then it is fermented in stainless steel tanks. And then after it is uh, fermented, it is then distilled twice using copper pot stills. Excuse the $18.99 lowest price. That's not correct. Um, that was on there from a previous slide, and I forgot to take it off. So ex excuse that. That is not correct. The lowest price for the uh, for the different expressions. I'll go over um, as we do the tasting on them. So um, the first expression we're going to take a look at. Now that you know how it's made, there's now some different things that are happening here that I didn't want to put on that slide and wanted to kind of talk to you about. Now they age the their tequilas in American white oak barrels. Okay, so they're aged in American white oak barrels, <clears throat> and then they finish them in PX, which is Pedro Jimenez, sherry casks. Now, if you're not familiar with what PX, Pedro Jimenez is, it is actually a type of grape that's grown in uh, in Spain. So it's typically found in, in Spanish sherry, okay? Now, um, they use a method in the finishing called the Solero method. Now, if you're not familiar with what that is, it, I'll kind of give you an idea. So you have several barrels. Let's say you have like, uh, let me find something to use here. Let's, let's use these glasses, okay? So you have glasses here that have a spirit in them. Let, you know, Typically, they use the, the Solera method for, for sherry. They also use it for rum and other spirits as well. So what you do is you have your one barrel that's, been aging for five, let's say five years. Okay. Let's a long time. Let's that that's ready. Okay. You have another one that's in the middle and then you have another one on the end that's got fresh distillate in it. Okay. And then what you do when you have your one on the end, that's ready, instead of draining the whole thing and using all of it, you drain a portion of it. Okay. And then to, to put to bottle and to send out as your product, and then you take the next oldest and you add, you fill it up with stuff out of the next oldest. And then you take the younger stuff and you dump you, it with when you, you want to leave some in the second one as well. So you're not taking all of them out of the barrels. And then you take stuff from the youngest and you put it into the next oldest. And so you kind of are moving stock from inside the barrels and blending them from different ages into the one that you're going to end up serving later so they create a new batch they fill up a barrel with it then they will take the one that's ready they bottle it they take the next oldest they fill if they put some into here they put the younger stuff into the middle one and so and they always leave some in there so you're always getting some of the older stuff left in the barrel i hope this makes sense it's kind of uh, hard to do without props. So instead of draining the barrel all the all the way, they'll use the, the next oldest stuff and they fill up in there so it has some of the older stuff that's in there that's ready that kind of mixed in with the flavor profile. And then they take the new stuff and they add it in and they just keep blending these barrels as they empty the, the last one to, to put their batches out and they keep moving them along that way. But I'm not sure how they did it finishing with this tequila, but that's basically how it's done with wines and and other spirits so um so they use sherry px sherry casks to finish not to actually do the whole aging though so uh, i'm not sure how long they put them in to finish and i'm not sure how they stack the barrels and, and how they do it and what's the term the end of the the aging the finishing term that they use you know how long it is or anything like that i didn't get all that information but that's what that's what they do i hope if that if you have any more questions about that when we get to the question and answer session, we'll talk about that. All right, so the first one that we're gonna take a look at is the Hoven, okay? Now, 
I want to explain to people. I know some people um, said it was a weird tasting Blanco. The Hoven is not a Blanco, okay? It's actually, it's actually a Cristalino. Uh, really, I mean, it's really just a Cristalino. What they do with the Hoven is they take Blanco and they blend Reposado in it, and then they finish it and then sherry casks, the PX sherry casks, and then they carbon filter it to take the color out. So that's why it's clear. So this is actually a Cristalino. But uh, they call it a Hoven because anytime you mix an aged spirit with a Blanco, uh, it becomes a Hoven. And so they didn't put Cristalino on here, um, I guess because they didn't want to. <laughs> but it is carbon filtered, okay? So that's what we're looking at with this one. And it, and it's finished in, in the Pedro Jimenez sherry casks. Look at pour a little bit in the glass here. And we'll go over this. Now, I do want to say that these barrels were, or these bottles were provided by a viewer uh, for an honest review. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. This is going to be an honest review. I always give everything a chance and um, I don't come in with any preset biases. Yeah, it's a celebrity tequila, but it doesn't matter to me. You know, I do recommend the Santo Fino Blanco from, from um, Sammy Hagar, and he is a celebrity. So I give everybody a chance. I just, you know, try it and give you guys my unbiased personal opinion. So looking at this in the glass, it coats the glass nicely. There's some legs and tears coming down the glass. There's some pearls on there as well. Uh, it is uh, crystal clear. There's no color to it at all. So just like a Blanco tequila would be. This is a Hoven, though. It does have Reposado in it, and it is finished in Pedro Jimenez sherry casks. So let's see what we get on the nose on this. Okay, I am getting cinnamon and baking spices from cooked agave in there. It has a uh, interesting fruitiness to it. I definitely picking up some grape in there. It's uh, on the floral side, but definitely there's some sweet agave uh, notes in there. It smells good. Doesn't smell bad at all. All right, so let's see what we get on the flavor profile. All right, we're gonna just kind of let my gums and and mouth get used to the alcohol, and then we'll <clears throat> do our tasting again. Here we go. Yeah, cinnamon, baking spices, a little bit of anise coming through, a bitterness right in the middle. Not a whole lot to it. Um, not horrible, not bad. It's definitely sippable and, and enjoyable. It's not bad, really. Um, how would I rate this one? I'd give it three agave. It, need, it needs more to become recommended for me. Um, it's still on the... I'd like to see more flavors coming through on it. Um, I'd like to see more of the sherry coming through on it since it's... It is finished in sherry casks, but it just kind of tastes like a mild Blanco. So I give this one three agave. It's it's not horrible. It's not bad at all. It does have a little pepperiness to it, a little bit of heat that carries the flavor through on the finish, but uh, it's not bad. Not bad. Now the Hoven goes for $44.99. Would I spend that on this? Sure. It's just a little different, and I'm not much of a Cristalino person, so for me, it's like, just make it a Blanco, right? Just We don't need to do all that other stuff if this is the way it's going to come out. It should just be a Blanco, and it would be fine as, as a Blanco. If this was just a Blanco, this would be fine. This would be good, but it's not. It's it's a Hoven. It's supposed to have Reposado mixed in, um, but I'm not picking up anything like that. I'm not picking up any any of the sherry in it at all. Uh, and for forty four ninety nine, yeah, well, it's not bad. So, all right. 
you know, the, the distillery that makes this is the same distillery that makes uh, brands called uh, uh, El Charo, Antigua Cruz, and uh, The Bad Stuff, which is an extra neo. Uh, I'm not a huge fan, fan of El Charo. I mean, it used to be better when it was older, uh, but the newer stuff's kind of rough. Um, but maybe that, you know, the cold filtering and stuff, the carbon filtering takes the roughness off that the normal Blanco would have. But it's not bad. <clears throat> All right, so um, this is the Reposado. Now, the Reposado is, um, it's aged six months in American white oak barrels and then finished in the PX sherry barrels using the Solera method. We'll go ahead and check this one out now. I'm going to clean my palate with some water, too, for you guys. All right. Yeah, I don't understand why they felt the need to carbon filter that and stuff. It's just, it's just, there's just nothing to it. It's like, okay, you carbon filtered it and uh, took the Reposado out. And now it's just kind of a semi mild Blanco. All right, so looking at the Reposado, it coats the glass nicely. We're seeing uh, tears and legs coming out of it, coming down the glass. Looks great. Color on it is kind of a light amber, kind of a deep straw color to it. Looks good for Reposado. <clears throat> on the nose... I am picking up cinnamon and baking spices from the ripe cooked agave. It's got a fruitiness to it, kind of grapey fruitiness. Got some vanilla in there as well. Some light caramel hints of uh, chocolate in there as well. It smells good. It's got a nice nose to it. <clears throat> so let's see what we get on the flavor profile. Definitely picking up the cinnamon and baking spices. Definitely picking up cinnamon baking spices. A little bit of fruitiness, like grapey fruitiness in there. Not a whole lot. Definitely that then followed by some vanilla, caramel, light hints of chocolate. There's an anise kind of background to it. So they're like the black licorice background to it. It's not bad. It's not bad. It's it's not. Fantastic. I would love to see more of the sherry coming through on this, but there just isn't a whole lot. It's not. Um, I was hoping to find some more. And before I did this tasting, I actually went out and bought a bottle of um, Pedro Jimenez sherry from Spain uh, to try. And I really enjoyed it. I was hoping I'd find some more of those notes in this tequila, but it's just, it's just not there. Um, it tastes just like a regular a Reposado. Um how would I rate this? It's good. It's not great. So I'd give this one three, three agave as well. So I would say it's good. Um, the price on the repo runs around $54. Um, so that's not bad for Reposado. It's right in line with uh, most other Reposados. It's good. Would, would I, will I finish the bottle and sip on it? Absolutely. Sure. Yeah. It's not bad. Would I go and spend $54 on another bottle? Uh, there's others that I would probably buy for that kind of money that I enjoy more. Um, but it's, uh, it's not bad. Okay. So that's the Reposado. It's enjoyable. Really? It's not, not awful. No additives, definitely no additives in either of these. If anybody was, uh, was wondering. 
but it's it's good. It's not bad. It's not it's not horrible. It's uh, it's it's good. It's enjoyable. But I wouldn't put it into the recommended category where yeah, you got to go try this, and I wouldn't put it into the category of oh my god, this is uh, life changing. It doesn't hit any of those for me. But um, for somebody that's been drinking Cuervo or Sousa or uh, any of the other celebrity tequilas, this is a good change for them. So if if you're into trying this, the celebrity tequilas, and let's say you're a basketball fan and you have Michael Jordan's Sincoro, I would recommend this over Sincoro a thousand times. No additives in this. Sincoro is loaded with additives. It's super sweet. This is is good. It's it's like a normal reposado. It's good. I wish I wish it had more of the grapeness from the from the sherry in it though. Personally, let's see if the extra añejo has more of that in it. All right. So this is the extra añejo we're going to take a look at. <clears throat> so let's take a look at it in the glass. Let me clean my palate from the reposado. All right. So we're using a new glass <clears throat> for this. So looking at it in the glass, it coats the glass nicely. You can see the legs and tears coming down. Looks good. The color is a nice amber color. Deep amber color. Looks great. No problems there. All right, so let's take a look at the nose and see what we get on the nose on this. Okay, a hint of ripe cooked agave, so just a hint of cinnamon uh, on the and baking spices on the front. I'm getting more um, like cherry coming through on this. I'm getting vanilla coming through as well as well as some caramel and it's got a richer chocolate note to it i'm not picking up any any grapeiness any any of the the sherry uh coming through i'm not picking up like the grape notes from it at all which is a shame i'd love to have more more of the sherry coming through on this all right so let's see what we get on the flavor profile Nice mouthfeel to it, coats the mouth nicely. Some cinnamon and baking spices up front. Get cinnamon and baking spices up front for a little bit, just a quick hint of them. Then I get some of the oaky bitterness that comes through, like from black licorice and anise type of bitterness. Then I get more of a, a slight hints of vanilla that come through, and then more of a bitter, um, a bittersweet chocolate on the end, where it's not as uh, rich chocolateness as some other extra nejos and stuff that have I've tasted has. Um, <clears throat> For, for me, the extra Nejo falls flat. It really does. Um, it, it could have a lot more to it, but it's it's on the flavor profile, it falls flat. There's not a whole lot there. It's not bad. I'd love to see a lot more. You know, and if you try something like, um, like Excellencia, you know, this is only aged for three years on American White Oak before it goes into the, the, the sherry cast to be finished using the Solera system. Um, but if you try something like Excellencia, there's a lot more complexity to it, where you're picking up a lot more of the the barrel influence, chocolate, and all kinds of great stuff in it, in it as well. And it's got a richer flavor profile. This kind of leaves me wanting more. It's there's stuff there, and if honestly, if you're a, a 1942 drinker, um, this would suit you fine. Um, price wise, it's 149, around 149 dollars for the extra nail. Um, would I buy this again to put on my shelf? No, I can get Excellencia for 130 plus, 
here in Southern California, and I'd rather buy a bottle of Excelencia than spend that kind of money on this. Um, I'm kind of disappointed in the extra Nejo. It's it's kind of flat on the flavor profile. So I would rate the Excelencia, or the, the, Excellencia, the extra Nejo, um, I'd give it to Agave because it just falls flat for me. Um, it, it, it's not bad. Um, Flavor-wise, I think many of you would enjoy it. Um, but for me, being a kind of an experienced uh, extra Nejo drinker and somebody who loves a good, rich, complex extra Nejo, this falls flat for me. All right, well, there you go. There's my uh, tastings and, and my opinions on these three expressions from Lobos. It's not bad, you guys. It's not bad. And, it, and if somebody's a basketball fan and wants to try it, I recommend trying it, really. It's not bad. It's not, it's not horrible. Um, it's just... If you're going to spend this kind of money, like $149 for the extra Neo, I can point you to a lot other options that are better. Um, the Reposado, it wasn't bad. It's 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 good. It's not bad. It's not bad at all. It's not horrible. Um, if you see it at a good price on sale, we're thinking about it, grab it. It's not bad. I think you'd enjoy it. But it's just, it's not as rich as some other Reposados that I enjoy. Um... The Hoven, it's a Cristalino. It's in its flat. It's uh, but it tastes just like a basic Blanco for me. Why bother? So I would leave the Hoven out. And if you're gonna look at this, look at the Reposado and the extra. Well, the extra. I just look at the Reposado. I leave the extra Nejo alone for 14999 I think I think it'd be better suited if it was a lower price, like eighty nine ninety nine type of thing. Um, because it just doesn't have the complexity as some of the other ones at the same price point. All right, well, there you go. Um, that's my thoughts. Let's go hit some of the questions and see what you guys think in some of the comments. Uh, all right, let's see. Um, hey, Glover says he's looking forward to the Lobos review. Good, I hope you liked it, and so is uh, JP. Uh, hey, what's up, DJ Joey O? Nice to see you. Thanks for joining us today. Can I do a tutorial video on how to join the... It's easy. Um, look on the YouTube channel next to subscribe. It should say join. And if it doesn't, because you're on an Apple or iOS platform, download Google Chrome and go to YouTube using the browser. And uh, it should show up there. And if not, just Google um, joining YouTube on iOS on Google. And there's some instructional videos that... Um, or Better yet, if you just click on the link that I put in the description, um, it'll you can sign up directly from the link in the description. Some people have already done that. Yes, extra nail. Let's well, extra nail wasn't as good as I hoped it would be. So, <clears throat> yes, it's an, it's another celebrity tequila, but it's you know he's just an investor. He doesn't own it. He's just an investor. Hola, Todd. Thanks for joining us today. I appreciate it. Hey, hola, Greybeard. Thanks for uh, joining us today. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Raul. All right, so let's keep going here. Oh, that's your last name, Osorio. Okay, well, this might be some of your family members in Spain if your if your background is from Spain. All right. So, does LeBron own a bar or club south of the border or something? No, he doesn't. He just uh, liked the tequila and um, and liked their philanthropic stuff that they do. So he invested in it to help them uh, with their philanthropic stuff as well as well as spread the word on the tequila so they can have more money to do more philanthropic things. That's all. You know, I actually don't mind LeBron James. The dude, if you ever look through his Instagram feed, he drinks Ray Saul. Oh, yeah. And anybody that drinks Ray Saul is a friend of mine. I don't care what anybody says, when he posts a picture or a video of him trying to do the race off face, it just melted my heart and made me want to sing. Yeah. Okay, so there you go. He likes race off. And he posted an Instagram post 
trying to duplicate the face on the Raysol bottle. So I got to like the guy for that. So I don't blame him for wanting to invest in a tequila company. You know, he, he likes tequila. He drinks tequila. But he just, you know, did it more for the philanthropic stuff that they do, which um, if you go to their website and look, you can see they um, well, some of the stuff that they're involved in and some of it's worthy causes. So I don't blame him at all. All right, JP, I knew LeBron wouldn't trash his own name. Great story behind it. Bourbon guys are always trying to get Pedro Sherry casks. Nice hope. It's good. It's not bad. Yeah, it's not, it's not, it's not great, but it's not horrible. <laughs> no, Mark, don't drink the crystal if you don't have, okay. Yeah, it was, it, it, knowing what it is, and you guys know how I feel about Cristalinos. Um, even as just drinking it, it, you know, if I was just, if I didn't know what it was, I would think, okay, it's a Blanco tequila and that's it. And it, it's a kind of a, a weak flavored um, Blanco tequila where you don't even get the the Reposado notes and stuff in it as far as I'm concerned. It just tastes more like, like a Blanco. Like they filtered out all the Repo and the Sherry notes when they did the carbon filtering on it. Um, so how do I like it? I, I think it's okay. Um, it's not great. But it's okay. I think that uh, that it could have been done better. I would have liked to seen it done better, more of the sherry present in it. Um, but you know, it's not horrible. It's not it's not as bad as some other celebrity tequilas I've had. Uh, it's not horrible. And thanks thanks for your comment, LeBron. I appreciate you being here to watch the review and to, and to be accepting of feedback. <clears throat> Hi, Mar Hi, Mario. How are you, buddy? Is 99,000 or... Oh, God. Come on. Now, let's talk about LeBron James now. We can get into that on Monday. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a hunting and old bottle thing for members. So we're going to do that on the community tab. So I'm going to get into some of the older bottles and hunting stuff and, uh, and, and let you guys in on some of the old bottles that I have on my collection. So if you join... Under the aficionados category, um, we'll get into hunting and uh, and finding of old bottles and and what's worth it and what's not and stuff like that on the live uh, streams and the content that we put together for the aficionado uh, members. Um, since aficionado members are typically the ones that are looking for some of the older stuff and want to know about it, so um, if you're not a member and you're interested in that type of stuff. Make sure you join on the aficionado um, level, and we'll get into some of the older tequilas and some of the stuff that's um, good hunting. And I'll even give you some of my uh, spots here in Southern California for those of you that are here on where you can find some of the stuff that you um, may be hunting for. <clears throat> All right, so uh, Graybeard says, I'm on Apple, and the link you provided under my comment on the membership video worked. Thanks. Okay, great. So yeah, there's that that same link and stuff is in the description below here on this video. So you guys should be able to find it there. Speaking of Ray Saul, I took my first taste of the 10 year today and you nailed it very oh good. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Gray beard. I'm glad you enjoyed it. All right, so is that all the questions we have on LeBron James's tequila? It's not bad. I mean, it's not it's not great, but it's not horrible. It's not bad. So if you've been thinking about it and really want to try it, try it. You're not going to, it's not going to disgust you. Uh, it, if you're an experienced tequila drinker, it may leave you wanting more like it did me, uh, but it's not horrible. It, it tastes fine. It tastes good. I wish I would like to see more of the sherry coming through than it has. You know, when, if you want to try a good tequila that's aged in wine barrels, <clears throat> that has a good mix and really has a really nice flavor profile is check out Excelia if you can find it at, um, from from um, La Altena, 1139. If you can find the Excelia from 1139, that is the way I think that um, tequila should be aged in wine barrels. It is, it is phenomenal. I love it. And it's no longer made 1139. It's made out of 1110 now. So if you can find it, Pick it up. It's good. Uh, but those are aged in uh, in wine barrels as well. And you get some of the grapiness from the wine, but also gives you some really nice vanilla and chocolate notes that come through. And it's got the beautiful agave there because Carlos Camarena does it right. 
Um, so that's one that I would recommend checking out if you find it when you're out about shopping. Um, there's still some in the stores. You can still find it, but you just want to make sure that it's from NOM 1139 and not 1110. Okay. <clears throat> all right. And Mario says he got his race all bottle too. Good. We'll talk about the race all and stuff on Monday, you guys. All right. So that's it for tonight then, I guess. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure you give me a like for all the information I shared for you guys. I'd like to see these likes increase on these live feeds. So everybody right now, take a second and click the like button below on the video. If you have any additional comments uh, later, feel free to comment below. Let me know. If you're not subscribed, click the subscribe button so you're notified anytime I go live with a review or any of the other videos that we do are posted. And then if you're not a member and you want to get more involved in the community and want to get some more detailed content, uh, some really cool content and some more one-on-ones with the master Tequileros and stuff, make sure you click the join button and uh, and come in as an aficionado. If you just want to support the channel and get in, be involved on some of the live feeds that we do where we're going to have member-only uh, chats available, uh, make sure you click the Amigo level and join as an Amigo, a friend of the channel. And I really appreciate you guys and look forward to really building a really fun cool and informative community here with the tequila hombre and until next time like i always say life is too short to drink bad tequila so lebron james's tequila yeah it's okay salute